welcome everyone just taking a moment to in gather i hope we were in gathering with the mantra just taking a moment again bring in all the scattered threads of consciousness Connecting with mother's presence deep in the heart. So, I think we were uh, last year somewhere. A current from eternal seas of bliss, he felt the invasion and the nameless joy. So, this was the last, according to my memory, that we have lost. This way. So what I'll suggest is that before we go ahead and take up the next bits, let us just read it all at once, starting from yeah, this much, and if I <laughs> just a random thought. <laughs> Yeah, and this time maybe we won't uh, read little, little bits. One person will, will read like about one page and then we will switch the person. We won't read very little bits. Uh, yes, yeah, so maybe I think this has a full stop towards the end of this page. So we can, the first person who reads can take the whole slowly as we all know. I think we are all aware of the intonation, how Mother has suggested to read Savitri or we have heard Mother reading Savitri or say for example Shraddha Van reading Savitri. We'll try to have a good intonation and we'll read uh, one page per person until the point that we reach where we have to start afresh today. So who would like to go first? Canto 5, Yoga of the King. Yes, yes. The yoga of the king, <clears throat> the yoga of the spirit's freedom and greatness. Canto 5. This knowledge first he had of time-born men, admitted through a curtain of bright mind that hangs between our thoughts and absolute sight, he found the occult cave, the mystic door, near to the well of vision in the soul, and entered where the wings of glory brood in the silent space where all is forever known. Indifferent to doubt and to believe, avid of the naked real's single shock, he showed the cord of mind that ties the earth heart and cast away the yoke of matter's law. The body's rules bound not the spirit's powers. When life had stopped its beats, death broke not in, 
he dared to live when breath and thought were still. Thus could he step into that magic place which few can even glimpse with hurried glance, lifted for a moment from mind's labored works and the poverty of nature's earthly sight. All that the gods have learned is their self-known. There, in a hidden chamber, closed and mute, are kept the record graphs of the cosmic scribe, and there the tables of the sacred law. There is the book of beings index page, the text and glossary of the Vedic truth are there, the rhythms and meters of the stars, significant of the movements of our fate, the symbol powers of number and of form, and the secret code of the history of the world and nature's correspondence with the soul are written in the mystic heart of life. Thank you, Anjali ji. So, uh, the next person can take the whole page until, until uh, yeah, this part and the opening verse of the tragedy. Yeah, anyone who wants to. In the glow of the spirit's room of memories, he could recover the luminous marginal notes, dotting with light the crabbed, ambiguous, ambiguous scroll, rescue the preamble and the saving clause of the dark agreement by which all is ruled that rises from material nature's sleep to clothe the everlasting in new shapes. He could reread now and interpret new its strange symbol letters, scattered abstruse signs resolve its oracle and its paradox, its riddling phrases and its blindfold terms, the deep oxymoron of its truths replics and recognizes as a just necessity, its hard conditions for the mighty work, nature's impossible Herculean toil, only her warlock wisecraft could enforce its law of the opposition of the gods, its list of inseparable contraries. The dumb great mother in her cosmic trance exploiting for creation's joy and pain, infinity's sanction to the birth of form, accepts indomitably to execute the will to know in an inconscient world, the will to live under a reign of death, the thirst for rapture in a heart of flesh and works out through the appearance of a soul by a miraculous birth in plasm and gas, the mystery of God's covenant with the night. Once more was heard in the still cosmic mind the Eternal's promise to his laboring force, inducing the world passion to begin, the cry of birth into mortality 
and the opening words of the tragedy of time. Okay, it's out of the depths, starting from here, and I think we'll take it till and learn the logic of the entire. Anyone would like to go ahead? Should I continue then? Yeah, you can continue. It's not anything. Out of the depths. Out of the depths, the world's buried secret rose. He read the original UK's kept back. In the locked archives of the spirit script and saw the signature and fiery seal of wisdom on the dim power's hooded work. Who builds in ignorance the steps of light? A sleeping deity opened deathless eyes. He saw the unshaped, thought in soulless forms. New matter pregnant with spiritual sense. Mind dare the study of the unknowable, life, its gestation of the golden child. In the light flooding thoughts blank vacancy, interpreting the universe by soul signs, he read from within the text of the without, the riddle grew plain, and lost its catch obscure. A larger luster lit the mighty page. A purpose mingled with the whims of time. A meaning met the stumbling pace of chance. And fate revealed a chain of seeing will. A conscious whiteness filled the old dumb space. In the void he saw throne, the omniscience supreme. A will, a hope immense now seized his heart. And to discern the superhuman's form. He raised his eyes to unseen spiritual height, aspiring to bring down a greater world. The glory he had glimpsed must be his home. A brighter, heavenlier sun must soon illume this dark room with its dark internal stare, the infant soul in its small nursery school, mid objects meant for a lesson hardly learned, outgrow its early grammar of intellect and its imitation of earth nature's art, its earthly dialect to God language change, in living symbols study reality and learn the logic of the infinite. Okay. So this, I think this is this last book left. 
will be a little bit more. I think we were on this page. So yes, would anyone else want to go ahead? I can also do it if not anyone. If somebody has the intention, please go ahead. Yes. Yes, Anjali. The ideal must be nature's Yes. The ideal must be nature's common truth, the body illumined with the indwelling God. The heart and mind feel one with all that is. A conscious soul live in a conscious world. As through a mist, a sovereign peak is seen, the greatness of the eternal spirit appeared, exiled in a fragmented universe amid half semblances of diviner things. These now could serve no more his regal turn. The immortal's pride refused the doom to live, a miser of the scanty bargain made between our littleness and bounded hopes and the compassionate infinitudes. His height repelled the lowness of earth's estate. A whiteness discontented with its frame resiled from poor essence to nature's terms, the harsh contract spurned and the diminished glees. Only beginnings are accomplished here. Our base matter seems alone complete, an absolute machine without a soul. Or all seems a misfit of half ideas. Or we saddle with the vice of earthly form, a hurried, imperfect glimpse of heavenly things, guesses and travesties of celestial types. Here chaos sorts itself into a world, a brief formation drifting in the void, eppings of knowledge, unfinished arcs of power, flamings of beauty into earthly shapes, Love's broken reflexes of unity swim fragment mir mirrorings of a floating sun. A packed assemblage of crude tentative lives are pieced into a tessellated whole. There's no perfect answer to our hopes. There are blind, voiceless doors that have no keys Hot climbs in vain and brings a borrowed light, cheated by counterfeits, sold to us in life's mart. Our hearts clutch at a forfeited heavenly bliss. There is provender for the mind's satiety. There are thrills of the flesh, but not the soul's desire. Thank you. I think I, this now is the last bit. Yes. Yeah. Is anyone inclined to read one more page? I can do it. Here, even the highest. Yeah, you want to continue, Dr. Anjali? You can read one no, more no, page. Can... No, I, I have still okay. some more left. So you continue okay. and you can read uh, until this uh, end of this section. Okay, okay. Please go ahead. Thank you. Here, even the highest rapture time can give is a mimicry of ungrasped beauty woods, a mutilated statue of ecstasy, a wounded happiness that cannot live, a brief felicity of mind or sense thrown by the word power to her body slave, or a, or a uh, sim, sim, how do you pronounce? Or a simulacrum. Simulacrum of enforced delight in a seraglios of ignorance. For all we have acquired soon loses worth 
an old disvalued credit in times bank imperfections check drawn on the inconscient an inconsequence dogs every effort made and chaos waits on every cosmos formed in each success a seed of failure lurks he saw the he saw the doubtfulness of all things here the incertitude of man's proud confident thought the transience of the achievements of his force a thinking being in an unthinking world an island in the sea of the unknown he is a smallness trying to be great an animal with some instincts of a god his life a story too common to be told his deeds a number summing up to naught his consciousness a torch lit to be quenched his hope a star above a cradle and grave and yet a greater destiny may be his for the eternal spirit is his truth he can recreate himself and all around and fashion new the world in which he lives he ignorant is the knower beyond time he is the self above nature above fate thank you so much yeah if anyone is inclined to read the last section please do starting from his soul retired his soul retired from all that he had done hushed was the futile din of human toil forsaken wheeled the circle of the days in distance sank the crowded tram of life the silence was his sole companion left impassive he lived immune from earthly hopes a figure in the ineffable witnesses shrine pacing the vast cathedral of his thoughts under its arches dim with infinity and heavenward brooding of invisible wings a call was on him from intangible heights indifferent to the little outpost mind he dwelt in the whiteness of the eternal's reign his being now exceeded thinking space his boundless thought was neighbor to cosmic sight a universal light was in his eyes a golden influx flowed through heart and brain a force came down into his mortal limbs a current from eternal seas of bliss he felt the invasion and the nameless joy aware of his occult omnipotent source allured by the omniscient ecstasy a living center of the illimitable widened to equate with the world's circumference he turned to his immense spiritual fate abandoned on a canvas of torn air a picture lost in far and fading streaks the earth nature summits sank below his feet he climbed to meet the infinite 
more above. Thank you. So this is where we, uh, I think we had touched this space last, a living center of the illimitable. And we had touched upon Jeevatman, if you remember. The central being, which is not part of evolution, but above evolution, but all the time accessible to us, a living center of the illimitable. And as we were talking last time, so this is about the ascent the consciousness has to make. We have to ascend upwards and also we have to go deeper, deep in the heart and upwards, two movements. And here it talks about the upward movement in this ascent, Ashwapati's yoga. So the realization of uh, the central being or the jiva, the living center of the illimitable. And also when we go above and when we concentrate, we can concentrate today also a while towards the end. So when we go above and we can expand our wideness, you know, we can take a walk left, right, you know, we can see that it is just a vast field above. So widened to equate with the world's circumference, turned to his immense spiritual fate and abandoned on a canvas of torn air, a picture lost in far and fading streaks, the earth nature's summits sank below his feet. So even the summits of earth nature, as we were talking last time, he went above and far away from those summits, climbed to meet the infinite more above. So this is one of the realizations of the sadhana, which one can make if one is inclined. And so maybe this, anyone uh, who want to take, take this, just for reflection and looking at these lines, just this yellow bit. The immobile ocean silence saw him pass, an arrow leaping through eternity. Suddenly shot from the tense bow of time, a ray returning to its parent sun, opponent of that glory of escape, the black inconscient swung its dragon tail. Lashing a slumberous infinite by its force into the deep obscurities of form, death lay beneath him like a gate of sleep. Yeah, I think they had touched upon this also. So maybe you can take a little bit further. Unpointed to the immaculate delight, questing for God as for a splendid prey. He mounted burning like a cone of fire. To a few is given that godlike rare release. One among many thousands, never touched, engrossed in the external world's design, is chosen by a secret witness eye and driven by a pointing hand of light across his soul's unmapped immensitudes. Thank you. I'm just remembering as we're reading that this also we had touched upon. <laughs> Should I read it? Yeah, you can go ahead. So this, this all is covered already. So you can take the part in green also. Okay. A pilgrim of the everlasting truth, our measures cannot hold his measureless mind. He has turned from the voices of the narrow realm and left the little lane of human time. In the hushed 
to sinks of a vaster plan. He treads the vestibules of the unseen or listens following a bodiless guide to a lonely cry in boundless vacancy. Thank you. I think around this time, uh, around this bit, we had already touched upon again. And we are all we are engrossed and if we have to go further, we'll have to leave this engagement. One among many, thousands never touched. And where are we engrossed? Engrossed in the external world's design. So only a one amongst many, many thousands is chosen by a secret witness. I do we last time Patrita ki baat kari thi, how we have to be ready and driven by a pointing hand of light across his soul's unmapped immensities. This we have taken. And he has turned from the voices of the narrow realm. So all the time, you know, we have something or the other going on in the head, all the sensory input and interpretation, we will have to turn away from them. If we keep engaged, then the ascent is not possible. So I think it, for me, it is never enough to remind myself that one has to turn away, one has to turn away. It just spoils that going forward. He has turned from the voices of the narrow realm and left the little lane of human time. So this all, all this big thing that we think that is happening to us and we keep ourselves engaged that in the spiritual terminology it's just a little lane of human time we are just at at times we are engaged there 80 90 years of our life and not aware of our possibilities at all so he goes further in the hushed precincts we had talked about what is precincts like a campus of the temple in the initial stages and then there is the deity within deep in the temple so the earlier part is the precincts in the hushed precincts of a vaster plan he treads the vestibules of the unseen or listens following a bodiless guide to a lonely cry in boundless vacancy so this solitude we'll have to befriend that's what we were talking last time that we will have to become very intimate with our silence and emptiness because that is the way further and then uh, i think we also touched upon these all the deep cosmic murmur falling still he lives in the hush before the world was born his soul left naked to the timeless one this we had again touched upon Far from compulsion of created things, thought and its shadowy idols disappear. You know how our thought from time to time gives us a glitter that this is where we will get it finally from time to time. So thought and its shadowy idols. Now he is no anymore, one can say, swayed by that glitter. Thought and its shadowy idols disappear. The molds of form and person are undone. The ineffable wideness knows him for its own. So this is cosmic realization. When one realizes uh, the central being and rises up in his stature, realizes, becomes one with the cosmic manifestation, cosmic realization. And we have sure been those words in letters on yoga on this. The ineffable wideness knows him for its own. A lone forerunner of the Godward earth among the symbols of yet unshaped things, watched by closed eyes, mute faces of the unborn, he journeys to meet the incommunicable, hearing the echo of his single steps in the eternal courts of solitude. So this again refers to that solitude that one has to go through, that we may have many, many good friends, very close friends, spiritual buddies and everything, all that is fine and part of the process. But this journey is 
uh, lone one. The inward journey, the inward realizations, they are lone one. So that's why hearing the echo of his single steps. When you meet with the divine, it's just a one-to-one -one meeting. There's no one else there. You can't take your family there. In the eternal courts of solitude. A nameless marvel fills the motionless hours. His spirit mingles with the eternity's heart and bears the silence of the infinite. So, you know, this intimacy with our own self, where we begin, initially we start with not that much of, one can say joy, but a necessity. But then slowly it actually begins to give us delight and joy, this intimacy with our true self. Where one is still and enjoying that silence and stillness within. Yeah, anything uh, towards the end of all that? Any lines that have spoken more to you and shared? So going ahead then. Yeah, yeah. In a divine retreat. So would anyone want to read uh, two bits, blue and yellow? In a divine retreat from mortal thought, in a prodigious gesture of soul sight, his being covered into pathless heights, naked of its vesture of humanity. As thus it rose to meet him bare and pure, a strong descent leaped down, a might a flame, a beauty half visible with deathless eyes, a violent ecstasy, a sweetness dire, enveloped him with its stupendous limbs, and penetrated nerve and heart and brain that thrilled and fainted with the epiphany, his nature shuddered in the unknown's grasp. Should I go ahead? No, I think uh, we can pause here. Thank you. So again, I think as we were, we have been talking about this, ascent and a descent. Very, very clear. A strong descent leaped down. A might, a flame. A violent ecstasy, a sweetness dire. Enveloped him with its stupendous limbs, you know, as if it's engulfing. Penetrated nerve and heart and brain. So these things are very uh, tangible, you know. And many a times we think that we don't get anything tangible. So these are the gifts. Gifts of the spirit came crowding to him. These are the gifts. When we rise, then we are gifted. And since the nature, usually the body, the physical is not totally ready to bear that descent, there towards the end he shares that thrilled and fainted with the epiphany. <laughs> it's like at times one is not able to bear uh, that much of bliss and joy and ecstasy. And that's why we see that whenever we are little joyful, if we have seen ordinarily how we live, we begin to dance or you know, we begin to jump because the body can't tolerate the joy. So to spend it out, so that it becomes tolerable, we dance. <laughs> so that the ecstasy becomes tolerable. Otherwise, in stillness, as if you can't hold it. Something in you wants to move. And that is the weakness of our container. 
which grows uh, slowly only gradually it can grow solid more solid and more strong his nature shuddered in the unknown's grasp yeah anything here you know the first sentence in a divine retreat from mortal thought you know we all want vacations we go for retreats tree hugging these days is very popular <laughs> here and yet a divine retreat from where from mortal thought so it's you not know how they say that even if you go on kailash you go right like nothing changes so even sitting here one can take a retreat from the things that bother which are the mortal thoughts yeah absolutely there is a kabir's song you know i must have shared usme ek line aati hai ban mein lut gaya munijan nanga das gayi mamta ulta tanga hare hare you know, so that even in the forest if the mind is crowded it's one and the same and this retreat uh, that we can have anywhere so very important because at times we are craving ki wahan jayenge tab ja ke retreat possible hogi so we can put the rest to that craving and begin the retreat here itself so i'm going to maybe take this moment to share with us something i found i find letters on yoga part 3 very beautiful here especially for the part that we are reading book 1 canto 5 so here uh, it's all about the ascent and the descent so shirvindo talks about the descent of higher powers so he says just reading a few bits just for all of us to we get inspired the descent of peace the descent of force or power the descent of light the descent of ananda these are the four things that transform the nature light peace force ananda constitute the spiritual consciousness if they are not among the major experiences what are then he says presence peace force light ananda these are the five things that most commonly come down wideness is only the first step there must be the descent of light knowledge peace force or power and the settling of these things and their constant development and then he talks about how peace is the basis of all these forces because if the container is not stable then it's very difficult peace and movement on the basis of peace are the first aspects of the one to establish themselves peace purity and calm of the self must be fixed otherwise the active descent may find the forces it awakes seized on by lower powers and a confusion created that has happened with many so i think that is also very important that if the descent happens and the lower is not settled then not in peace then he says it can cause confusion along with the descent yes when things begin to descend they must come down on a solid basis that is why it is necessary to have peace as the first descent and that should become as strong and solid as possible once these two things are settled peace and strength one can bear any amount of everything else which is 
आनंदा नॉलेज और वॉट एवर इट मे बी देन समबडी मस्ट हैव एक्सपीरियंस्ड समथिंग अगेन सो ही सेज द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ दिस सॉलिड ब्लॉक फीलिंग इंडिकेट्स द डिसेंट ऑफ अ सॉलिड स्ट्रेंथ एंड पीस इन टू द एक्सटर्नल बींग when one has gone so far that peace from above can descend that is a considerable progress peace has to be brought down to the heart and navel first that gives it a strength sorry that gives it a certain kind of inner stability so these two areas are very important the heart the silence above the head and stability in the lower vital area you know which is around the tummy the stomach and below the stomach navel so he says peace had to be brought down to the heart and navel first that gives it a certain kind of inner stability so this lower piece is also something which can be called like one is you know lying down we are lying down before we sleep and if you feel the tummy area and the navel area and actually you call and invoke stillness there absolute solidity there that helps to just stabilize that area because it's the most disturbed area that we have all the time we are troubled by emotions and it is the seat of emotions not only the front part of the heart that also is the seat of emotion but the lower vital the desires the expectations the demands from life you know, all that is in this area the stomach and below the stomach so if we call peace while we are lying down or whenever whenever we can and make it absolutely still totally still no movement that really solidifies that the container so we'll do a little uh, maybe meditation before we end concentration if we have anything we can maybe share right away Yes, it's just give me a moment. Nowadays, Google is all the time asking for check if you are not a robot. So, again and again, you have to tick just a second before I can access. Actually, it's very strange. Now it allows. find it somehow 2.5 change yeah got it so i'll just uh, just give me a moment i'll put it on the screen so that we can see also न 
timeless sign annuls the hour, abolishing the agent and the act. So now his spirit shone out wide, blank, pure. His wakened mind became an empty slate on which the universal and soul could hide. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a bit.